Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second edition of the Economic Times Global Business Summit. At this venue, just over a year ago, I described the world economy as flying on one engine. I wondered then if India could be the second engine. A year later, the answer appears to be yes. Inflation is under control and the rupee is relatively stable, though the currency has experienced its share of turbulence. While emphasizing the positives, I do not want in any way to minimize the challenges facing the economy. Notably, a prolonged weakness in private sector investment. But at the Economic Times, we are more optimistic and prefer to see the glass as being half full. Government spending is beginning to generate an uptick in the investment cycle, with the road sector leading the way. Power sector reform and the cleaning of the coal sector are expected to be big investment drivers going ahead. The railways and defense sectors undergoing a similar cleanup could also generate investment on the scale India needs. The financial inclusion drive has moved beyond the opening of bank accounts to the delivery of affordable financial services. Every household now has a bank account and the number of zero balance accounts is steadily diminishing. Just before the previous GBS in 2015, the government had carried out major reforms by issuing ordinance in the areas of insurance, mining, and land acquisition. Some later became law, and some didn't. Two sweeping reforms are currently in the works. One is the long-delayed goods and services tax, or GST, that promises to revolutionize India's tax regime and turn the country into one common market. We hope a political consensus can be arrived at quickly so that there is no further delay in its implementation. India also needs a bankruptcy legislation that's in Parliament to be passed as soon as possible into law. We have to modernize outdated rules that make liquidation a long drawn out process that results in pain all around. The Prime Minister has led from the front when it comes to attracting investment. He has been a vigorous and energetic ambassador in selling the India story to the world. Some of his signature initiatives such as Start Up India and Make in India are beginning to gain traction. In this context, I must compliment the government for unveiling a package of incentives for startups. India is, a blessed, India is blessed with a dynamic startup ecosystem. According to some experts, it is the third largest in the world after the US and China. I would also urge the government to continue with this drive to make it easier to do business in India. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said last year, economic reform is only one of the many building blocks of a rising India. I reiterate my call for reforms in the field of education and healthcare, areas so far untouched by the changes in our economy since 1991. We must make it easier for the private sector to participate in these areas. I'm sure Finance Minister Arun Jaitley's next budget will lay down the markers for the government's economic plans going forward. This evening, you have already heard corporate leaders and Mr. Nurul Rubini speaking about the challenges facing the world economy. Over the next two days, I'm sure our distinguished participants, including CEOs, ministers, and foreign dignitaries, will debate many aspects of the Indian economy and engage with events unfolding on the global stage. Thank you.